All right, uh, it is that time of year again. We got our black box stuff. I gotta do this up for the percentum cage. Um, the entire room is kind of in shambles right now. Everything's kind of everywhere. I have to rearrange a lot of stuff. But this is the XA3 bio. So this is a 3 by 18 by 18 with the extra white lip there for bioactive substrates. Um, and I'm gonna deck this out to try to make it look very Vietnamese, or Vietnamese persimmon. So I figured I'd, you know, I'd take this opportunity because it's such a cool species and they're always out. Uh, take this chance to kind of make a nice naturalistic type sort of setup that looks sort of that is themed like their their natural habitat uh, to an extent. So I'm gonna walk you through how I'm gonna set this up. Um, got some pretty cool ideas for it, so let's check it out. Um, so one thing that I have here that I've had planned is to recreate sort of a bamboo stand kind of deal. So all of these, after multiple different kinds of trying to figure out how to attach them to this base plate, finally figured it out and settled on some silicone. There are screws up through that uh, into some spray foam, which initially didn't hold well, so I ended up having to go and add this silicone. Um, but basically, this is going to go into the this side of the setup but it's going to be covered, uh, the base plate part is going to be covered with dirt and it's going to sort of stand and look naturalistic. I got some some plants to throw in there as well, some other decor, I'm going to add some perches along the back and side under the UV here because these guys will get UV. I got some cool naturalistic looking pots from Walmart for three dollars which I think will look pretty cool. Got two more of them that I bought today for three bucks a piece. I'm gonna kind of find a way to break these. I'll probably leave one hole and then break the other two just to kind of make them look like a, I guess like a abandoned type pottery kind of deal. Yeah, so the female persimmon who is currently down in that setup is gonna go in here. That's the male up there. Uh, and eventually next year he's gonna go in here as well when it comes time to breed them. So it'll be cool, but let's go ahead and get these trimmed. I made these too tall, so I gotta go and take probably, I think about four inches or so off each one just to get it to fit in there. And then I've got some other stuff to, to start adding to it as well. So let's get into it. So the bamboo is trimmed to fit. I'm happy with that. I think it'll look really good when I get the perches and stuff in there. Basically, I want there to be kind of a back corner that I can at least easily access still, but the snake can sort of hide and feel secure. This is removable set. If I ever end up using this cage for something else, the bamboo isn't attached because I did have some people ask me, you know, why not just, just attach the bamboo to the bottom somehow or another, and it's just because I want to be able to use this for something else eventually if that's the case. So, next, um, figure out perches and where I want to put them and then getting them attached. So for those, I am planning to use crepe myrtle perches like I have in here with my adult rhinos. So I made these, they're clear coated, they're safe, uh, attached via washer, hanger bolt, and wing nut to the side. They look good and they work well. So let's get into that. Okay, so hopefully you guys can hear me with the, uh, the fan and stuff going, but Basically, when I make these these perches, I use this polycrylic clear mat, water-based finish. Um, this was recommended to me by woodworking friends and people that have made their own cages um, and clear-coated the insides. This is what I've been using now with the rhinos for a while and some of the other stuff, and I have not had an issue with it. The big thing is letting it dry fully and you know sort of get the the smell out. But here's crepe myrtle. This is a piece that I, I debarked and sort of got ready for coating a while back. It's sanded. This is what it looks like without sanding. Basically I take these, I'm going to clear coat it, I'm going to sit and uh, let them dry and then tomorrow I'll come through, I'll sand them one more time and then I'll hit them again and then that's when I attach the hanger bolt <coughs> which for anyone not familiar this is a hanger bolt, so this is the side that's going to go into the wood itself here, and then you attach your washer and wing nut to this end, uh, and I have some super glue that I'm going to attach once these are in there. 
I'm going to attach the, the hanger bolts in there with the, with the super glue to make sure they stay put. Um, these come in a ton of different sizes. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them at uh, Lowe's. And uh, they're really handy for making perches. I'm going to get started on clear coating these now. Perches are in, so this will be kind of a nice little basking shelf. Got this one so they can kind of can hang out up in the corner. This one that runs through the bamboo. So now, basically, I'm going to move on to substrate plants and sort of accent pieces but looks pretty good i'm pretty happy with it so far might move that perch it looks a little out of place so that one i ended up not even drilling into the back i just put it through a vent but i may may center it here i don't know i'm gonna think about it a little bit and then decide but this will look sharp This is the final layout. I did decide to move this perch over here. I think it just works out better overall. Almost gives an entire other layer for the female to use, um, eventually the pair to use. And then we'll have some nice cover and stuff over here. So get some plants in this thing and some substrate. Uh, this is all gonna get covered up by the substrate. So you're not gonna see any of that. Um, and then some of these are kind of loose, so once I get the substrate and stuff in there too, I'll be able to sort of shift these around a little bit to how I really want them to be and, uh, you know, kind of clean it up a little bit. So, moving right along. Okay, so now I'm working on sort of getting some, there's going to be a base layer of uh, topsoil. I'm sort of making my own version of ABG here, kind of a, a poor man's version. So I got some uh, lump charcoal here, natural lump charcoal. Uh, nothing added to it as far as accelerants or anything like that. <clears throat> some topsoil, and then I'll usually add in some uh, mulch, a little bit of that. Maybe crunch up some leaves and stuff in here just to give the plants something to sort of sus uh, sustain on. You know, that way it's not just topsoil. And then over that will be a nice layer of cypress and then some magnolia leaves and stuff on top of that. So right now I'm, I'm mixing the... Uh, soil in with charcoal kind of getting the mix going and then I'll be adding it to the cage All right, so one of the plants I'm gonna be trying is this lemongrass I got it at Walmart for super cheap uh, the big thing with plants from the store like that be it Lowe's Home Depot Walmart whatever is you need to make sure you rinse off all the dirt they come in and then really rinse off the plant as well just because of the pesticides and fertilizers and stuff they use on them you really don't want those added to your cage so we go ahead and get this cleaned up and then get it planted and then get the other plant planted and then we'll be doing the layer of mulch on top. Plants are now in. Now it's time for our base layer or uh, top coat, top layer of mulch. And then on to the next. Okay, here we are. Cypress layer is added. Sort of adjusted the uh, base of the bamboo there a little bit. Put some between it so I can get it to kind of move where I want to. Now it is time for accents. So this is almost finished. I think I want to get more of these uh, like husk pieces to kind of add to the, the base of this over here and make it more real looking. Other than that, I mean, I just got to get the light plugged in and sort of get it ready to go and then add the snake. I just need to add water bowl. UV light is on. Go. All right, she is in. She is very confused. And shout out to Black Box because this pain was so clear. I tried to put her in with that door closed, not realizing it was closed. So. Crystal, crystal clear. Uh, a big part too that I want to mention about moving snakes into new enclosures and upgrading and stuff like that. This cork was from her previous BioG. Normally I would take some old substrate, so some of that old cypress, and sprinkle it around the cage. Uh, I found in, in my experience it's purely anecdotal, but I really think that adding that familiar scent uh, really helps them adjust better to newer setups like this especially for more high strung species like i said anecdotal i think it helps i found it helps with chondros when i i take the puppy pad from their you know or paper towel from their previous setup and put it in the new one 
Um, they just seem to to fit to, to fit in better overall. I'm gonna let this girl do her thing. I made the little sort of partition in the back there that she can use. She's curling up in it. So we'll see how this holds up long term. See how these plants do. I'm not sure how well lemongrass will do in here. This I'm not all that worried about. That's like a spider plant I think is what they're called you know all this dried bamboo and stuff there's no heat panel in here I don't give these guys external heat they get whatever the light is you know room temperature they do really well just like rhinos so we'll see thanks like subscribe if you have any questions or comments drop them below check out blackboxcages.com seriously some of the best you know this whole stack is black box stuff this whole rack stack is black box stuff it's all awesome you will not regret it bio G's I mean, they look killer if you, you know, you really set them up right. Can't say enough things about them. Use the code THN to check out. Save yourself a little bit of money. Thanks, y'all.